So Eva, you are a mom. Um, and I, I can also put myself in that category, which is, which is pretty cool. So how has motherhood changed you as a person? Oh my gosh. It was like, I don't know if it's the same for you or not, but there was the me before I gave birth. And then there was the me afterwards. Like there's a very definitive moment of like transcendence. Like you're just, now you're existing on a completely different level. And it's, I think like it opened me up a lot more emotionally. Like my ability to love has just expanded like to a place where I didn't know was possible. I always thought like I loved my husband or I loved my family or my friends. But then when you have this little person that you created, you're like, holy, this is like, this is another thing. Like there needs to be another name for this, this kind of feeling that I'm having. Um, I think also I'm just like hyper focused on, I would just like, for lack of better words, like it's super trendy right now and it's going to sound crunchy, but like conscious parenting, right? So every little thing that I'm doing, you know, up until year seven is creating that inner voice for him and like what he's going to constantly tell himself and the rules of the world, you know, according to how we raise him. So is that going to be like a positive tone? Is that going to be really pessimistic? And like, that's a huge freaking responsibility. So, um, we're also at that point where, so he's a year and a half where we're approaching like that first memory territory, right? So what's his first memory going to be? Like, I, like I'm responsible for that. Like me and my husband, is it going to be a positive one or is it going to be a negative one? Um, so like there's just like a lot of pressure with that. And I think just more awareness of just how I'm behaving, how I'm thinking, um, and just trying to like make his life the best that it can be. Yeah. No, I totally hear you on that. It's funny. My husband and I, cause Violet's eight months and we keep telling ourselves and my parents too, because I, I moved in with my parents recently and we all swear a lot. <laughs> And we're like, we've got to like stop swearing all the time because we don't want our baby's first word to be fuck. Like, even though it'd be kind of <laughs> hilarious, um, probably not a good thing. And, and yeah, and actually one of the things that we're kind of struggling with right now, she's going through a sleep regression. As I was telling you before we started. So, you know, she woke up at midnight, she woke up at 3 a.m. She woke up at 5.30. Um, it's like, you know, some parents let the babies cry it out. and. I don't want to do that because part of me feels like, what if that feeds into this thinking pattern that's going to start super early that when I need something, I won't have it provided to me, you know, like, I'm, mm -hmm. or, you know, other people might say, oh, well, you know, you're, you're, if you let them cry it out, you're teaching them to self-soothe and be independent. But I'm like, but is it also like teaching them that they're not supported when they need you. Like, I don't know. What, what did you do? Did you let them cry it out or did we you? We cried it out. I like, we, we did cry it out at like five months was when we did the sleep training. I thought I was going to have to lock my husband like in, in the bathroom or in the bedroom because he's like, I have to go. We, it was very opposite. He's like, I have to go get him. And I was like, you will stay put. We are doing this. Um, when he was like at his worst with the sleep regression, it was every hour on the hour. And I was like, oh. I cannot function. So we hired someone and we, it took almost, um, two weeks. Like he was resilient. Um, but I was like, I leaned more in the camp of it teaches you independence and self-soothing and all of that. Um, there's this interesting book called attached. Let me see if I, Ooh. I know it's behind me somewhere. Um, but it's on parenting and attachment styles. So according to the data, it's that if you meet your child's needs, not wants, but needs like diaper, food, um, like sleep, all of that, one out of every three times you're like, you're in a good place. You're in a good position. So that made me feel a lot better because I felt like I had to make meet every want, let alone every need. Um, cause I'm like, well, I don't want a kid, the same thing that doesn't think that they, they're, they're supported or that they're unconditionally loved or that they're safe. Cause that's obviously really important too. So it's like, well, where's the line? Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely what I'm, what I'm struggling with right now. Mm -hmm. Do you worry about how you're going to tell him what you do for a living? I don't really know exactly the way to go about it. 
like we talk about it all of the time. It's super important to both my husband and I that we're the first person to break that news to him. Like it's not going to be anybody else. Um, So I think that's going to take just a lot of vigilance to see like who he's hanging out with and where they seem to be on as far as um, like an emotional level. Like do I have a gut feeling that maybe like they're looking at some magazines or that, you know, maybe one of the kids has access to the internet unsupervised, like just being aware of that. Um, and then prior just dropping like little seeds, like maybe it starts with, you know, mommy's a model and starting with Mm -hmm. that and mommy's, you know, kind of famous. And as he gets a little bit older and again, age appropriate, break that news to him. Like, so maybe it starts with, you know, or is in the middle where, you know, mommy was naked on, um, online and how do you feel about that? And, you know, let him explore those feelings until we break the news that it's a little bit more than just being naked. Um, And then I I think it's super important, too, to just, like, be okay with however he reacts to that, right? It's like I can't predict it. I can't predict it at all right now. Um, I hope that it goes smoothly, but I always say I think the benefit is is that it's it's a potential train wreck that I can see coming. And I think Mm -hmm. how rare is that in parenting that we know, like, a very obvious, like, pain point. So at least I can prepare for it, whereas I can't predict anything else. I can't predict if he gets bullied for whatever reason. I can't predict if he becomes a bully. Like, how do you handle these things? Um, So I think it's actually a little bit more of an advantage than other parts of parenting. Mm 